What's actually in store for this economy? Insight on that. We're joined now by David Rosenberg, Chief Economist and Strategist at Gluskin Chef and Associates. Good to see you, David. Thanks a lot. Let's start with your economic forecast then. Do you think the Bank of Canada is a little too optimistic that things can turn around to a point that would warrant higher borrowing costs? Uh, no, I think that uh, we're going to have quite a few difficulties getting uh, even to the 1.7% growth uh, that the bank is now calling for uh, for the coming year. Uh, the, the one thing that really caught my eye was that despite everything we've seen in terms of financial market tightening and all the volatility and the leading indicators coming from all the survey data in the U.S., uh, the Bank Canada didn't even touch its U.S. forecast. Uh, they left it at 2.4%. Uh, I think that's a real pie in the sky projection. I think the U.S. is going to have a very difficult year. I think that would mean that the Canadian economy is going to have a difficult year on top of all the other problems layered in addition to that. But, but to me, the real uh, fly in the ointment uh, today, uh, and there was a couple, but the real key one was they didn't downgrade their U.S. economic forecast. I certainly would have. All right, so the fact, given the fact that there could be a rougher road ahead than the Bank of Canada thinks, are we talking about a 2019 where the Bank of Canada is on hold? We've maxed out at 1.75%, or are we actually talking later in the year about the possibility of a cut? Uh, I will, uh, based on my economic forecast for both Canada and the United States, that wouldn't surprise me at all if the next move was going to be a cut. Uh, I know that uh, you know, the narrative is that uh, the bank still left hanging in there uh, the prospect that they want to raise interest rates uh, over time uh, into that neutral range. Uh, I think that's going to be way out into the future. Uh, you know, I, I'm actually just um, uh, perplexed why the bank continues to talk about this neutral interest rate range. Uh, the Fed seems to me is starting to back away uh, from that concept, and it's only because it's inherently unobservable. Uh, I don't think that uh, the, um, the, the neutral rate is anywhere close to where the central bank officials on both sides of the border uh, say that it is. I think that the bank is over tightened as it is. I certainly think the Fed is way over tightened. We'll see, we're starting to see that in the data, not the employment data, which is a lagging indicator, but the forward looking data uh, are certainly telling me that it's going to be a very rocky road for the economy uh, in both countries in the coming year. So yeah, my view right now is that uh, the central banks are on hold. Uh, they both seem to want to have the markets think that the next move uh, is going to be a hike, uh, but I don't think that the economic data are going to allow them to deliver on that projection. How dangerous then does it become for this economy given the amount of debt we're carrying? We were warned all through 2017 and 2018, and to be fair, they did raise rates five times since the summer of 2017, that borrowing costs are going higher. You have to stop borrowing to the degree that you have. And we did see borrowing slow down last year. Was that because we're just maxed out or because we thought money would get more expensive? I guess what I'm trying to say is, do we start going back to the trough now? Well, uh... I don't think so. Uh, I think what you're going to probably find, uh, especially as the economy weakens, uh, is that the banks, uh, as they normally do, uh, they tighten up uh, their credit guidelines. So uh, I'm not overly worried uh, about there being you know, another, another lineup uh, for a renewed debt expansion. Uh, I think quite the opposite. Uh, you know, the Bank Canada makes the point that uh, household balance sheets are improving, and they are improving. And credit growth, thankfully, is finally decelerating. Uh, and households are getting their balance sheets in a better shape. I guess the question that I would ask uh, a central banker, or I would just ask people in general, is that you know when you get credit growth slowing, it usually means that nominal GDP growth is slowing. Uh, so you can't have it both ways. Uh, you can't have this view that households are tightening their belts, which is what balance sheet repair means, and have a forecast that the economy is going to be doing that well. Now, the, to its credit, the Bank Canada cut its forecast for Canada. Uh, I still 1.7 percent to me is probably on the high side uh, and was interesting that you know they come out and say that one of the areas of the economy that they are cautious about uh, is the consumer sector. Well you know the consumer is 60 percent roughly 60 percent of GDP. It's going to be very difficult to get much economic growth at all uh, if the consumer is going to be on the debt treadmill uh, and uh, you'll need a real you know uh, blast of growth coming out of capital spending and exports uh, to offset what the, that 60% is going to do, which is going to be very weak. So uh, I think that this process of taking down the Canadian GDP forecast, uh, this is not the last stop uh, on that road. I think that, uh, that there's going to be more downgrades coming down the pike.
How should Canadian business leaders be viewing what we're hearing out of the Bank of Canada? I mean, the, the hope for us, and just as, just as you said, we don't want to rely on the consumer to carry this economy they have for a decade. We want to see businesses put money to work, create jobs, and buy equipment. Are they going to be a little more reticent after today? Well, uh, I, I don't really think that it's going to have much of an impact uh, really uh, on anything. Uh, I mean, uh, the Canadian dollar uh, r rallied on the statement uh, because... Uh, the narrative was that the bank's next move was going to be to raise rates and that wasn't priced into the futures market so we had a bit of an up move in the Canadian dollar. Well, what was interesting to me from if I was a say a, a, somebody in the, in the business arena it's that a lot of the bank's optimism on growth especially uh, non-energy exports hinges on and they come out and say it on a weak Canadian dollar. Hmm. So I would just say to any business out there uh, in the financial sector not financial sector uh, treat this rally in the Canadian dollar in the past couple of weeks with a heavy dose of skepticism. I think that we should continue uh, to have a forecast of a weaker Canadian dollar uh, and however that affects your business as an importer or exporter uh, to be aligned with the view that the Canadian dollar uh, is going to be weakening from where it is today uh, for most of the year in my opinion. Uh, David, lastly I want to ask you, put all of that together, can Canadian workers expect to see any increases in their paycheck this year or are we stagnant on wages? Well, I wouldn't say that we're, I mean, we're, we're not stagnant. It's just that growth is extremely anemic. And the answer to your question is uh, most likely uh, because the one nugget uh, and the one really new piece of information today uh, was that the Bank Canada discovered that we have a bigger output gap than they thought previously. Uh, I mean, in their range, the output gap, which really measures the amount of total economic slack in the economy, uh, could be as high as 1% of GDP. Uh, the midpoint of the range is 0.5. I, by the way, don't think that that output gap is going to be closing in the coming year. And as long as you have a positive output gap, uh, the trend in inflation, and that would include the determinants of inflation, which is wages, are probably going to remain on this decelerating trend for the next several months and quarters. Thanks for your time and your insight as always, David. Take care. That was David Rosenberg, the chief economist and strategist at Gluskin Chef and Associates.